right, so I thought I'd walk you through one of each of the different types of homework problems, um, mostly for the directions, the wording, the vocab, that kind of stuff, so that you'd understand it. So we're going to start with number four, and I've tried to draw it here as best I can, representing what's in the book. But if you'll follow along, you'll, you'll get a, a, a better picture, probably. So the question says, and I haven't drawn the, the red line that you see there yet, the question says, use the, the graph to approximate the slope of the curve, the slope of this curve, at this point, x comma y. Uh, they don't even tell us what x and y are. We don't know for sure. But that's not the point. We wanted the slope of the curve. And I don't know if it weirds you out as much as it did me when I first started learning this stuff, but the idea that you could know the slope of a curve at a point is a weird thing. Um, but the question really just comes down to draw a line that is tangent, and the slope of that tangent line is the slope of the graph at that point. So the idea of a, of a tangent line showing you what the, the, the slope is, and being able to find the slope of that tangent line, you know, that's, a, that's an important one. So, yeah, this picture is going to be terrible because this is supposed to be about 2, and this should give us 3. This is 1. So it, it, it looks like this line goes through the y coordinate uh, 2 and a half. And then over here, it looks like this is 2. Okay, And it's just an approximation. May maybe your estimations of where this line is uh, is different from, from what I see or what others see. As long as it's fairly close, that's all we're looking for. Um, so remember that we're looking for the slope of this tangent line. That's rise over run. How far does it go vertically versus how far does it go horizontally? Well, if I pick this point here to this point here, if I combine my drawing here with, uh, with also, the, the, also the drawing in the book, this looks like 2.5 on the y-axis. So it looks like, if we use these two points, this comes down 2.5. So that would mean down 5 halves. It's best to use fractions, improper fractions. Uh, and then it goes over, I'm going to say 1 and 1 fourth. So it goes in the positive direction, so it's positive 5 fourths. So let's see what this gives us. We'll multiply by the reciprocal. We can cancel these out, cancel these out. This is a 2, this is a 1, these are 1s. So we get negative 2 over 1, so negative 2. You might not have thought this was 1 and a fourth. Maybe you thought it was 1 and a third. That would have been really close to. Um, but either way, we're just approximating the slope of that line. It's an important basic concept to, to understand. So use the limit process. We're doing number eight now. Use the limit process to find the slope of the curve at the specified point. Um, so number eight gives us a function called h, and it is a function of x. So we're going to find the slope of this graph at the point. They also give us this, negative 1 comma negative 3. So there's this graph, uh, or there's this function here. If we were to graph it, it would be a line. And we want to know the slope of this line at negative 1 comma negative 3. Uh, which is somewhere on this line. It's actually on that graph. So remember, let's use our, our ethereal blue color just from out there somewhere in our memory or the universe somewhere comes this information of the limit process. Remember, to find the slope of a curve at any point, we want to use the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, If you have trouble understanding this, just go back to the previous video uh, and, and look for a, a summarization of where this comes from. And we'll just go ahead and use it now. Uh, I've lost my color. There's my color. 
Okay. So we and and we'll have to make the substitution instead of f of x. We're using h of x. It's not that big a deal. Um, so to help us out a little bit, here we're going to use h of x plus h. Don't let it throw you off that there's an h there and an h there. This is the name of the function. This h stands for the distance between the the uh, horizontal distance between two points. Again, go back to the previous video if you don't understand what this h means. And then we're going to subtract this uh, h of x, just plain old h of x. We're going to throw it over h, and then we're going to work from there. So, um, first of all, what we need to understand is that we're working at a specific point at uh, negative 1 comma negative 3. So this this h of x is actually h of the x value that we are are located at where we want to find the slope. So it's h of negative 1 right because this x is that x value that we want where, where we want to know the slope. So h of negative 1, we already know that. If we put a negative 1 in here, we'd better get negative 3. So we have that information. That's negative 3. Okay. Then we're going to want at, at h of x plus h. And this is going to be uh, negative 1 again. This h. And this is a different h from that. Don't let it throw you off. Uh, so what's that going to be? Well, this we're going to have to do some work here. This needs to go in there. Uh, for x, so this needs to go in for x everywhere we see x. So 2 times negative 1 plus h plus 5. That we just distribute this 2, so negative 2 plus 2h plus 5. Um, and that's, that's the best we can make it look. So here we have our h of x plus h. We have our h of x, and h is just always going to be h. So now we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2 plus 2h plus 5, that's our this piece, h of x plus h, minus just the h of x, and the x we're using is negative 1, so that's going to give us a negative 3, so minus negative 3 over h. And still we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, uh, now let's you know, make this positive, negative 2 plus 2h plus 5 plus 3. You know, what we really should have done is uh, do two things at once. 5 minus 2 is 3. So we've got 2h plus 3. Um, plus 3. Okay, so after pausing my recording for a, a few moments, I have found that there is an error in the book. At the beginning of this problem, I said that they wanted the slope at this point, and that this point had better be on this graph, uh, and just taking the book on its word, trusting the book, I assumed that it would be, but turns out, if you look at it for a second, you plug in negative 1 in here, and you do not get negative 3. You get positive 3. So write a letter to the editor of that book. This should be a positive 3, not a negative 3. So uh, you know what does that mean for us? Not a lot. So we just need to go back and change. Well, we know we, we took this piece of information from here, so this should be a negative 3, or a positive 3. This should be a positive 3. Um, and so instead of this being a positive 3, this should be a negative 3. Okay, and now we can continue on our merry way. All of this is over h. So now we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2h over h. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of just 2, because the h's can cancel each other out, the common factor of h. And so now when we let h be 0, what does it do to this? Nothing, because there's no h in this expression. So it, nothing happens. So the slope is just 2. Um, and I, I think that, yeah, so, yeah. At least that's right. Now, think about this. What we've, what we've just accomplished is to find the slope of this graph at this point. But it's not all that amazing. Uh, we could have found that out by looking at this. This is a, the graph of this thing would be a line. 
this would be a line. And we know this is slope-intercept form. This is always going to be the slope of the line. Okay, But it's nice to get that confirmation. And no matter what point we would put in here, we'd always get an answer of 2 because the slope of a line never changes. Now, the slope of other, of other graphs, like parabolas and, and cubics and that kind of thing, they will change. Uh, but it is, it's, it's good to get confirmation. And I'm glad I did that one so that you can see that it was wrong in the book. That's always fun. Gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling and a, and a trust for your textbook makers. Um, number 14. Actually, I have an older version of this book. If you have a, a book that has a, like a little on the spine of it, if it's white at the bottom rather than yellow at the bottom of the, the spine, then probably that mistake's not in there. That's a newer version. Anyway, number 14. g of x is equal to x cubed. And what they want from us is to find a formula for the slope of the graph of f at the point x, comma f of x, then use it to find the slopes at the two specified points. OK, what in the world does all that mean? Well, if we go back to number 8, what we did was plug in a specific point into this function to find the, the specific slope at that specific point. Now, and, and you, what you can imagine is you could keep doing that. You, I, I could erase all this work, give you another point, and you would do all this work again. And then I could erase all that work and give you another point and do all that work again. Um, and you could always do that. And what you would find is you would always be doing pretty much the same stuff. And you would find that 3 would always cancel with negative 3. And you would, you would always wind up with uh, kind of doing the same process, just plugging in a different x value every time. Plug in, plug in a new x, plug in a new x, plug in a new x. So what we're going to do is do all the work like this, but don't use a specific point. We'll just leave it x. And when we get done, we'll have this new function. A uh, new formula that has x in it uh, that we can just plug x into and find out the slope. Okay, so here's what I mean. It, we'll we'll kind of repeat the same setup, and instead of you know negative one comma some number, you know this would be negative one one or plugging in negative two eight or anything like that. We'll just say let's leave it x. We'll leave, leave it a variable, and then the the y value would be just f of x. It would be whatever you get when you plug x in there. Uh, and and we'll see what we get there. And again, I'll write down our little limit, the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, I'll replace these uh, appropriately, appropriately. g of x plus h minus g of x over h. And now we'll do our work. So we want to find, well, let, let's make a little bit of this easier on ourselves. We're going to need g of x. There it is. We're also going to need g of x plus, and you know what I'll even do here is uh, I'll grab another color. So g of x plus h is when it, you put g, x plus h in there into the x. So x plus h will get cubed rather than x getting cubed. So this is good. It's, it's going to get give us a little work to do here. x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. So we'll multiply these two together. We get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared times x plus h. And we'll get x cubed plus uh, 3x uh, squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. OK. Is that right? Let me think. Yes, it is. OK. So you know, we've done all the work to find g of x plus h. We cubed out this thing. And, and here we go. We're ready to plug that in. So we're going to want the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, or, or g of x plus h, which is this x cubed plus 3x squared h. And this looks a little you know, more confusing, maybe. It's, it's really complicated looking because we've got the x in there. But it really winds up being 
less work in the end, because we'll have this formula that we can plug in any x that we want to find the slope, rather than doing all this work for each individual value of x. Uh, so minus f of x, or g of x. Uh, g of x is x cubed over h. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Look, at there's an x cubed and minus uh, another x cubed, and there it goes away. Okay. And when you do these problems, and when you did the previous problems with specific points, what you'll notice, what's going to happen, guarantee it, is, unless it's something weird like the square roots or something, but uh, everything's going to subtract itself away up here, except for the things that have h's in them. Okay, and why is that useful? Well, I'll show you in this next step. Now we can see the only thing in the numerator is all this stuff with h in it. And so what we'll do, since they all have h's in common, we'll factor out an h. So factor out an h, so we'll be left with a 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared all over h. And what happens now? h's cancel each other out. We've got a common factor there. Limit as h goes to 0 of and now all of this stuff. OK, take a look at that. So. Now when we put h into this expression, we're going to put a 0 in for this h and a 0 in for this h. That's, that'll be 0. 0 times x times 3, that's going to be 0. So the only thing left now is 3x squared. So what this means is, for this function, which I'm going to draw a really rough sketch of, oh goodness. Okay, it looks kind of like that. Um, at any point at x equals negative 1 or x equals 2 or x equals negative 15, any place that we want to know the slope of the curve, we've done all the work with the limit process. And now what we have is this beautiful formula that if I want to know the slope at 2, all I have to do is plug 2 in here. So the slope at 2 is going to be 3 times 2 squared, and that's going to be 12. So the slope of this graph at 2 is 12, and that was that easy to find the slope, rather than having to plug 2 in for x, and then we would use 8 here, and doing all that work over and over and over for each different point. Now we have this formula that does the work for us, or rather the work's already been done by us. Okay, so number 30. Here's the great thing about number 30. I'll, I'll tell you after I've written it down. The great thing about number 30 is it's exactly like number 14. It says find the derivative of the function. Do you know what the derivative of the function is? It's a formula that will tell us the slope at any point that we want. That's what the derivative of a function is. It's a formula that tells you the slope at any point. So we just need to find that formula once again. Using... It's the last time I'm going to write this for you. But the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, to help ourselves out, let's find out what f of x is, or find f of x plus h. Well, we're going to plug x plus h in for every x that we see. So we get x plus h squared plus, or minus, minus 3 times x plus h plus 4. Alright, so this is going, we're going to square this out. x squared plus 2xh plus uh, h squared Distribute this negative 3 minus 3x minus 3h. Oh, I apologize for the this droopiness, but that's that's what it is. Uh, and let's see if we can, can we put anything together here. X squared, h squared, 2x, h. No, we can't. So we may as well just start in on the limit. The limit as h goes to zero. Of, of f of x plus h, that's this guy here that we just did, 
x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 4. Okay, I'm going I'm to write minus f of x right now. Uh, I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to predict that everything here that doesn't have an h in it is going to get subtracted away by the stuff I'm about to write. I'm going to predict that this x squared, not this, not this, because they have h's in them, but yes, this 3x, this negative 3x, and not this, because it has an h, and also this 4 is going to get canceled out. That's my prediction. So f of x now, right? f of x, this is f of x, this is f of x. x squared minus 3x plus 4 over h limit as h goes to 0 of, OK, let's see what happens here. x squared minus x squared cancel. Negative 3x minus negative 3x. That would be a, a positive 3x. So goodbye, 3x's. 4 minus a positive 4. They cancel each other out. My prediction uh, came true. And so now all we have left in the numerator is stuff with h in it. And since they all have h in them, and just to save space, now in this next step I'm going to factor out an h. So I factor an h here, here, and here. They have a, fact, a common factor of h. We have 2x plus h uh, minus 3h. No, not 3h. Just 3. Over h. Cancel. Okay, now that we've canceled these, let's imagine that we'll write down the next thing, but all we're going to write down is the limit of this. Limit as h goes to 0 of this. And so we're going to plug in 0 for h. And when we do that, this will go away. There's no other h's, so all that's left is 2x minus 3. So rather than having to do all this work, which was pretty extensive, uh, all we have to do is, if we want to know the slope, you know, what's the slope? At x equals 3. That's what I want to know. Well, all I have to do is use this derivative. This is the derivative of the function. Uh, this is, you would actually do uh, f prime of x. That denotes the, the derivative, and this just means hey, this is a formula that will give you the slope at any x value. So 2x minus 3. So f prime of 3 is what I want. I'm going to plug this 3 in here. Equals 2 times 3 minus 3 equals, that would just be 3. Be 6 minus 3. So the slope of this function at 3, now that I have this derivative, this formula that tells me the slope at any x, it's 3. So pretty awesome, I know. Um, let's see, now I'm going to have to just get rid of all that work. And we're going to start over up at the top. Uh, number 52. So number 52, f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 4. Okay. Use the derivative to determine any points on the graph of f at which the tangent line is horizontal. Use a graphing utility to verify your results. So what do we need to do? First, find the derivative. That's what we just did in number 30. We're going to find the derivative. Uh, I'm going to help myself out by first finding f of x plus h. I know I'm going to need it. So x plus h squared minus 6x plus 4. Oh, sorry. Let's go back. Got ahead of myself. Need to multiply 6 times x plus h. I got to make that substitution for all the x's. Plus 4. This will be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 6x minus 6h plus 4. And nothing to put together, so uh, yeah, we're we're just going to have to use that long expression. Right, so we want, I just want to get colorful here. So I'm going to use another color. The limit as h approaches 0 of, now we're going to put in f of x plus h, which is all this, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 6x minus 6h. 
plus 4. Remember my prediction now. Uh, I think what's going to happen when I subtract f of x, the pieces of f of x, um, you know, these pieces are going to match up with these pieces here. I'm going to subtract off this and this and this. I know that's going to happen because none of these have the h's in them. The things with h's will stay. So here's f of x, x squared minus 6x plus 4. And uh, we'll go back to the purple over h. Okay, so this is just the f of x plus h. This is the f of x. There's some nice color coding there. So the limit as h approaches 0, what happens here? x squared minus x squared. Goodbye, x squared. Uh, negative 6x minus negative 6x. Goodbye, negative 6x. 4 minus 4. Goodbye, 4. They all got canceled out. They got subtracted out, and all that's left is stuff with x or h in it. Excuse me. So that's all that's left. 2xh plus h squared minus 6x or 6h over h. And this will be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of factor out that common h. 2x plus h minus 6 over h, common factor of h. What is the limit of this function uh, when we put 0 in for h now? Now that we've gotten this, this 0 over 0 situation handled, uh, well, it's just going to leave us with 2x minus 6. That is what we call the derivative of f, or we call it f prime of x. This is f, the derivative of f, we say f prime. There's actually lots of uh, ways to denote that. Now, the, the next part of the question is, where is this graph, where is the slope of this graph horizontal? And if you imagine just really quickly, you know this is going to be a parabola, so it's going to be a shape like this. And so, uh, what does that mean? The slope is going to be horizontal here. Let's say at this point, the slope is a positive slope. The, over here, the slope is a negative slope. Where would it be horizontal? Where would the tangent line of this graph be horizontal? It would be right here. Right there would the, hor the, the slope go from ne these negative slopes, and we see they're positive slopes over here. You know, somewhere in the middle, we must have a zero slope. And that would be right down here at the very minimum value. Okay, so you can imagine anywhere there's a bottom, like a valley, or a mountain, or whatever, a minimum or a maximum, you would have a flat slope, a horizontal slope. Well, what's the, the slope, the numer numerical value of a, of a horizontal line? It goes rise over run, the rise is zero. It doesn't go anywhere in the vertical direction over, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, anything could go here. Hippopotamus, uh, cheesy gordita crunch could go here. It doesn't matter. You divide anything into zero, it's zero. So the slope is zero at a horizontal tangent line. So here is a function, a formula that gives us the the, the tangent, the slope of the tangent line at any point. And we're curious, when will this give us a zero? And so now we solve for x, and we can see that x would be 3. So this is the answer to number 52. All that work, we get 3. 3 is a very cool number, though. So um, don't hate on 3. Um, so that was 52. We'll do one more, number 56. Use a function and its derivative to determine the points on the graph of f at which the tangent line is horizontal. Uh, oh, you know, some small piece here that I forgot for this that, that I know they're looking for. Um, they want a point. This is an x value, so the actual point on the graph, right, is going to be an x y value. So the x is three, and what's the y? Well, we'd have to put it in here really quickly. We get three squared. That's nine minus 6 times 3, that's 18, so 9 minus 18, that's negative 9, plus 4 is negative 5. 
Okay, I neglected to put that. Okay. And remember I said up here in this little drawing, anywhere we have a minimum or a maximum value, we'll have a, a horizontal slope. And so for some of these problems, you, you may wind up getting two or three values where you get a zero slope. So just be aware of that. Uh, probably two at the most, I would think, though. So the difference here for 56 is if we don't have to find the derivative. And let me tell you, using the limit process to find the derivative of this monster would be um, not fun. I'm sure I'd hear you all complaining very much. Because what they do is give us the derivative. And remember, this is the, the way we denote, or one way that we denote, the derivative. f prime of x is the derivative of this function. And so it is 12x to the third plus 12x. Uh, yes, squared, 12x squared. Whew. So find any points where the uh, tangent line is horizontal. Points, OK? So not just the x values, but the x and the y values. So anywhere that this guy here, this guy here, is 0, because this is a formula. The derivative is a formula that gives it the slope at any x value. And so we're curious, what do we have to plug in for x to get this whole thing to be 0? So then we go about solving this problem. Not a difficult one for pre-calc students. We factored out the common x squared, so x squared could be 0. 12x plus 12 could be 0. So x could be 0, or x could be negative 1. Uh, what do we do with that information? Well, those are the only the x values, so we need to get the x and the y values. So if we put in an x and 0, now what point will this be on the graph? Well, it's going to be on the original graph. So we put 0 in here to find the y value. And you can see pretty quickly that's going to be 0. Let's see if we can do negative 1 here. Uh, up in here. Negative 1 to the fourth is going to be just positive 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 1 to the third, that's going to be negative 1, so that's going to be negative 4, so 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 comma negative 1. Alright, so that's uh, just one of each. Thanks for watching.